Hi guys and welcome to a bonus episode, I guess we could call it, of the Work and Knits podcast. If you are joining me for the first time here, I would highly recommend popping over to one of my more regular podcast episodes where you might learn a little bit more about me, what I tend to do on this channel, but if you are a returning viewer then this is the promised roundup of my favourite yarns in 2023 and this is all happening and all being published and going live whilst I'm on my honeymoon. So if you have any questions um, or comments that you want to share with me please feel free to do so but do know that I won't be responding for probably a good like one to two weeks but I will get back to you I promise on my return. As much information as possible should be in the description box below and I've taken some quite avid notes ahead of recording so hopefully I can give you all the juicy details on these different yarns. So let's dive straight in. I have tried to make sure I have a project or an item to show you with the yarn being knit up to kind of really add some uh, visual context I guess to, to what I'm saying about each yarn. Uh, if the camera is moving that's because my cat has decided to join us and is sat directly behind you. So apologies. Right, where to get started? Well, uh, let's start with a yarn producer quite close to home for me. So earlier this year I became aware of a new to me brand called We County Yarns. We County Yarns are based out of Scotland and I just love what they're doing. <laughs> but I came across them at Wonderwall Wales and had to pick up a couple of skeins of their Kinross 4 ply. Now, Kinross 4 ply is a fingering weight yarn. It's about 205 metres or 224 yards, depending how you like to, to measure your, your uh, length with yarn. Um, and that's per 50 grams. And I must have bought six skeins, I think. So I bought this colour, which is the shade Inver Array. Hoping I pronounced that correctly. I bought another darker shade, which I believe is called Scots Pine, and then I bought four skeins in the colourway quartz. Now, I don't know if you can see if this is going to show up on camera. There we go. Can you see that in the skein it looks quite thin, contained, stringy, and then the jumper is so plump. It's like cashmere. So this is a the the yarn maintains its spinning oil they don't wash all of that out before selling it in skeins i think this is so good because what it means is once you've knitted up into a fabric when the oil then comes out during the washing process all the little microfibers blend together to really make a seamless fabric it's not felting it's just it makes this really they just connect i guess and so your stitches maintain definition but you just get what looks like a really polished finished fabric and as I say it has to be one of the softest yarns that's not cashmere without holding like a mohair or a suri. I knit four skeins that's 200 grams up into a uh, version of the Gallant Sweater by Kadri. Um, this is the Gallant Sweater mohair edition but I didn't do it with mohair I just did it with the Kinross 4 ply and this was very gappy when I first knit it up but I have worn and worn and worn this I must have finished this a few months ago end of the back end of the summer I have just as I say worn it so much so Kinross 4 ply absolutely had to make it onto my list of favorites for this year um, I'm not sure what the price point is like if you're trying to access it from mainland Europe or the US Canada uh, South America or even um, Asia and um, Australia and New Zealand I'm not sure but in the UK it's a pretty cost effective price point quite a kind of reasonable um, cost yarn given that it has been entirely produced in the UK so yeah had to make it onto my favorites quite a different yarn that I'm going to come to now is Wool Dreamers Siona, Siona, Siona. Um, so this, I'm gonna hold up a mitten now for people who've been watching my podcast episodes, you'll know this is kind of like a semi half finished object. It's missing a thumb. Um, but I have knit, um, this main color is the Sci Siona base and it is 50% Andalusian cotton and 50% Merino. Um, you get about 220 meters or 240 yards for 50 grams. And 
what I would say is if you're someone that's not sure about knitting in cotton, maybe that's not something you've ventured into yet, I can highly recommend starting with this yarn because the wool lends it a softness, a flow off your needles. It's, you know, sometimes you can hear about cotton that it's a bit like squeaky on your needles or it's quite like stiff to knit with. The wool really like softens it up, but you start to really be able to enjoy some of the qualities of cotton. It retains heat really, really well. So it's actually a very warm fiber, particularly when it's blended with wool and it's just really comfy on your hands, on your body. I cannot wait to knit a garment out of this yarn. Um, so this is the colorway Ozetta, but really, really enjoyed knitting with it. I have just bought a skein as a giveaway prize for someone because I love it that much and I wanted to share the joy. So that is Wool Dreamers Siona, and we've got a little bit more Wool Dreamers to come later in this video. I'm gonna tick these off as I go because otherwise, there is just no way I'm going to keep track. So the next favourite for this year is a very recent favourite, literally this week, but I couldn't not include it. But you're also kind of seeing a cheeky, uh, almost finished whip and test knit in the process. So hopefully by the time you see this video, I will have published a video talking about this test knit in more detail. Um, this has been a super fun, super quick test knit, and I am so nearly there with this. Um, but <laughs> you're seeing it inside out because I knit all my things inside out. Let's turn that the right way around for you all. Okay, hopefully that hides a few more of the, uh, the loose ends. Um, so, <laughs> this is, and I've stopped in a really unfortunate place for showing you guys, but I'm currently knitting the ribbing around the face, but this is the Harris Hood by um, Coco Moore Knitwear. And I was fortunate enough to be chosen to test knit this and it's been a really nice speedy test test knit but funnily enough I, I'd i seen the call go out for the test knit and I'd seen what some of the kind of like recommendations were in terms of yarn and I thought to myself even if I don't get chosen I absolutely want to knit this. So I bought some Isaya Eco Soft in preparation. Doo -doo -doo. So the Isaiah Soft is like a, uh, it's a chain construction. Some people call it an eye cord construction. They basically make a core of, a core and then they blow the fibre through it. I don't know if you can see that very well. Um, in this instance, it is, let me get the stats for you, 56% alpaca that is blown through a core of 44% organic cotton. And in a 50 grams, you get about 125 metres. Um, but I've just really, loved knitting with this it's almost like knitting it's almost like knitting merino held with mohair but without the like faff of having two balls and obviously the pattern's amazing but i'll leave details for that for for my other video but um really really enjoyed knitting with it and this absolutely had to make it onto my favorites again i'd love to make a sweater out of this i just think it's incredible um so that had to had to join the list today uh, and in case you're interested, that is, the colour that I'm knitting this up in is the colour E2S. So we're about three in, and I hope you're seeing that the yarns that I've really loved knitting with this year have been quite diverse. We've got some really like warm and fuzzies, we've got some real like workhorse, great for colour work kind of yarns, and we've also got maybe some more unusual yarn blends, like the wool and cotton. My next one, I hope kind of slightly falls into that category. So I really, now I'm like looking around me being like, where have I put it? Um, so my next choice, now I feel like podcasts maybe like three to four years ago, we're talking about this all the time. And I think amongst the like Scandi podcasters, uh, this has to be a firm favorite, but um, yeah. I've not seen it talked about quite so much recently. What I'm talking about is Holst Garn. Fantastic for colour work, fantastic for tight knitters who like knitting very, very small gauge items. Um, but yeah, main main body of this jumper that I'm holding up, which is a um, modified, kind of tweaked version of the Strange Brew sweater recipe by Tin Can Knits. The main body of this is in Heathered Navy, which is a colorway by Holsgarn in their two ply jump weight yarn. And I have absolutely loved this yarn for ages. Um, I've probably been purchasing this for like over five years and 
still love it as much as the first day I bought it. Sorry, I'm kind of trying to subtly put my so phone on silent whilst I'm talking to you, not so successfully. Um, the this comes in both 50 gram balls and um, big cones and the wool is made up of 50% Falkland wool no not Falkland Shetland 50% Shetland and 50% merino and in a 50 gram cake you get approximately 207 meters or um, 314 yards now something I would say about Holst is whilst that's the meterage they tell you there seems to be some form of magic where you just seem to be able to get more knitting out of a ball than you normally would. I know this sounds like complete rubbish. I know you're like, well, how can that be? But to give you some context, I've definitely knit, yes, probably a bracelet length, like kind of cropped sleeve sweater. And yes, it's cropped in the waist, but nonetheless, like an adult woman's small to medium sweater with positive ease, with sleeves in like two or three 50 gram cakes, so like 150 grams. So there is some magic with Holst. Again, a bit like the Wee County yarns, it comes with a lot of oil in it and then it blooms. So I think you can knit it at quite loose gauges and then the fabric really fills out. They've got so many colors. And aside from shipping, which shipping from Denmark to the UK is not fantastic, but if you take just the price of the yarn itself, dependent on your exchange rate but generally speaking this is a very very cost effective very uh budget friendly yarn and yet you get such a high quality knitted product out of it so i have knit so so many sweaters hats scarves haven't knit gloves in it actually but i've knit so many items in this um and i cannot recommend it more particularly to beginners who are trying to maybe forage into color work and don't want to necessarily invest in kind of really high price point yarns when they're still kind of figuring out their technique but they want something that's a really like good quality finished object so that would be my next uh yarny favorite for this year talking about um talking about yarns from outside of the UK still. My next favourite, which I've actually only knit in once, but I knit this headband earlier this year, and this is knit up in Fado, 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 by Fonti. Now I'm seeing Fonti being stocked in more yarn shops, but when I knit with this earlier this year, I barely seen it anywhere. Um, so I was so delighted to be able to get a chance to knit with it. And I'm pretty sure I picked up this ball when I was at Retrosaria Rosa Pomar over in Lisbon in Portugal uh, but I absolutely love this yarn this headband shot off the needles not just because it's a small object but just the yarn moved so nicely across my needles and the plumpness of it and yet it feels airy it's just it's just created a really like rustic but polished look I think uh, I'll show you up a little bit closer So yes, Font, uh, Fado by Fonti, and this is 100% Arles, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Portuguese Merino. And 50 grams is 125 meters. So this is a proper like Aran weight yarn. That's the other reason the project went so quickly. But I absolutely love this. Would love to knit like a cabled sweater in this in 2024. Coming a little bit, actually, should we come close to home or should we stick with the Portuguese? Ooh, I've got another Portuguese yarn favourite. Oh, my cat's come to join me again. Hello, Beatrice. Um, another Portuguese yarn favourite. And this is Retrosaria Apresenta, basically. And I've tried to describe this in some of my podcast episodes. I never feel like I do it very well and I overcomplicate it. But essentially, um, it is unbranded yarn that Retrosaria Rosa Palma in Lisbon sell in their shop so it's not really attributed to a specific brand retrosario rosa pomar put their own labels on it but they kind of say this is unbranded yarn and this is their um suri alpaca and mulberry silk it's 74 percent baby suri and 26 percent mulberry silk you get about 300 meters per 50 grams now on the little tag most of it's in portuguese which i love really really back having these yarn labels in kind of you know native languages um but i am not sure whether nefeli is the what they're calling this base or whether it's the color 
Um, but I know lots of you will be familiar with Surrey Alpaca. This has to be one of the softest Surrey Alpacas I've used. I thought it was really, really reasonable. And what I really liked is that it was kind of amongst a range of other yarns which are all promoting the Portuguese yarn industry. So absolutely loved it. And it's an example of where it's been knit up. This is my Recollect Cow by Jennifer Steingas, AKA Knit Love Wool. And it's the white chevrons that you can see. And I don't know if it's gonna show you a halo, but it's just gorgeous. So there we go. That is my next fave for this year and I've got enough left over to do something really lovely but I'd really like to knit some like mitten inners like mitten liners or I mean I'd love a sweater in this but I mean that's a little bit indulgent but I absolutely love this so you'll be seeing me knitting in this more. I'm gonna come a little bit closer to home again this is a UK based yarn brand but I I cannot speak more highly of this brand. And I think my pause there was like, I I can't quite put into words how I enjoy it, but I find this knitting process, like I knit a sweater in one of their yarns and I just could not put the item down. And the sweater design itself is lovely, but actually the sweater didn't come out the way I wanted it to, but it was just the feel of the yarn in my hands and the fabric it was making. So who am I talking about? I'm talking about John Arbin Textiles. Um, this particular item, not the bottom one third, but the top two thirds is knit up in their Knit by Numbers DK yarn. Um, this is a slipover by Camilla Vad. Um, I can't quite remember the name of it, something beginning with G. Um, but the top half, I mean, they've just got so many shades of their Knit by Numbers yarn and it's all done literally by numbers. So the colours don't have like colourway names, they're just... A number. Um, I do have some left over and I'm really pleased I do because they have just switched their base for this particular yarn um, and both are absolutely beautiful but I'm really pleased I've got like enough to make something in and of itself of my leftovers and then I want to try the new base. The old base was 100% merino now it's 50% merino 50% BFL so really excited and you get uh, about 250 meters per 100 grams with this DK. Uh, but there are loads of John Arbin yarns I could have included in this top 10. I've tried their Exmoor sock, that would be in a whip that um, if you watch my podcast you will have seen me talk about it maybe three or four months ago. I got second sock syndrome and haven't knitted the second one. Um, I have also used their Pure Elements DK which was a limited edition yarn in 2022. Loved it, I've used their Apple Door DK. That's gorgeous that's got so many colors spun into it uh what else have i tried from them i've tried their yarnadelic sport which was the jumper that i just loved the process of so i've tried quite a few of their yarns a huge huge fan and what i really love is they're so open about the production of their yarn where all the yarn comes from they do yarn tours of their mills so you can actually see it all being produced I just love the ethos. I could do a whole video just on them, but for now, I will leave it there. If you haven't already checked them out, I really, really would. Okay, so we're down to like three more. And sorry, I'm shuffling around, wiggling around <laughs> because I'm sat on the floor. It's a really, really dark evening here in the UK and I was struggling to find time whilst it was light to record. And then I thought, oh, maybe I'll do like a cozy vibes video. And then I thought, no, because I'm going to save that for Vlogmas. Oh yeah, if you didn't know, I'm doing Vlogmas and you should come and check it out. Um, so, last couple. I'm going to come to the other Wool Dreamers yarn now. And this one might be a bit hard to show in terms of the product because it's still like attached to loads of scraps that are, in full disclosure, just like dumped in a bucket. Uh, like a felt bucket thing. Um, but anyway, we'll start with the, the ball I've got left. So this is Wool Dreamers Manchalope. This is an unspun yarn, a bit like Neutadin, a bit like Plutalope, a bit like, um, oh my gosh, there's loads of them now that make this. This particular one is 100% Manchega wool. Wool Dreamers are huge on promoting uh, Spanish uh, sheep breeds. And uh, that's an, uh, that a, bit, a bit like John Arbon. If you haven't checked out their Instagram, you absolutely should. They go really in depth on how they rear the sheep, how they then process the fiber. It's 
beautiful natural content I just has a place in my heart um so yeah 100% manchego wool if you hold it it's wound up into this this cake in with two strands held together and if you knit with those two strands together you get about 230 meters or 251 yards per 100 grams but if you are brave enough and delicate enough knitting and you can do it with just one strand you'll get 460 meters or 503 yards per 100 grams um and I, again, prices will vary depending where you're trying to access this from, whether it's local, whether you're having to get it shipped, but I bought this when I was over in Sweden, I believe, and this was very cost effective. Obviously, there's less processing in them producing this roving compared to like a fully spun and plied yarn, so that kind of makes sense, um, but can create some beautiful fabrics, and I'll show you the fabric it creates in one moment. The final thing I was going to say is just have a look at this colour. Oh, it's so right what does it look like knit up so exactly the same color and this project looks a bit weird right now but just bear with but i'll show you the fabric up close so there we go this is going to be a hugely steaked massively oversized project we're getting there guys it's only this big and it's been off the needles for ages it's been on pause but anyway that's a whole other story um so my final yarn, and I think this one, people are probably going to be like kind of talking. Actually, no, I'm lying. Not my final yarn, my penultimate yarn. So there's going to be two that I think people might feel like, oh, I wonder if she's going to talk about this. And I am. Um, so I want to do a, like a joint shout out, which technically is cheating because it kind of means there's 11 yarns in this video. But uh, so Sana's gone Sunday. And Thickalana Panilla, for me, are both like absolute have to have a garment in them. Um, for pretty similar reasons. I mean, I know they're slightly different gauges. I really love Thickalana Panilla, which is 100% Peruvian wool. That's like a kind of sport to DK. It's a light DK weight yarn. And then this um, Sun has gone Sunday base. The fingering version is the one that I'm talking about in particular. Um, obviously, a fingering rate yarn. Um, so different weights, but I love them for the same reason. I just think they create the most beautiful fabrics. They create like a luster on your fabric. There's like a bouncing of light. They create this smoothness. I just think it's gorgeous, and it makes them look so professional and just so chic um so i really love that and they are not super washed so they managed to do all of that without being super washed and i just think that's amazing this is an example of me knitting up the light pink is the um sandals gone sunday and i'm knitting up into color work and i just the fabric is just do you see what i mean about that luster i mean come on um the the Panella is also an absolute love of mine. I haven't got it here to show you on the video because it's packed, ready for our travels. Um, but if you watch my regular podcast episodes, you'll see it quite a bit. I love it. And then finally, oh, sorry, I didn't give you details on the Sanna's Gone Sunday. Um, so that's 100% Norwegian non super wash merino, 235 meters or 257 yards per 50 grams. Um, and again, pretty good price point on both that and the Vilkalana Panilla. And then very finally, I mean, how could this be a yarn roundup without this particular brand featuring, and I'd say in particular this that this particular base of theirs, and that is Knitting for Olive and their Merino base, that's their light base. I've got several colours here to hold up and show you. Let's do that. Oh, I love it. I must say the item I've got to show you right now to hold up is the Colourwork Flea Stitch Cowl. I must confess, and I might um, feel differently once I've blocked it, but I'm not 100% convinced it's the best yarn for Colourwork. Just saying, at least held on its own. I think with mohair that might kind of glue it together better. Um, but it doesn't fail with Colourwork. Um, but it's beautiful held to knit kind of uh, textured garments, cable garments, lace. Uh, and just plain stock and that looks glorious and the colorways is one of the best parts i just love it 
100% merino and you get 250 meters per 50 grams so you get some serious yardage in there. I love it and as I say it couldn't be a yarn roundup without some KFO. So that is my quick run through my favourite yarns of this year. If you like this kind of video and you'd like me to make more of them, I'd be more than happy to. Let me know down below what kind of topics you'd like to see. I know lots of people have been doing roundups of their favourite patterns, um, but I'm sure people maybe have enough content on that topic, but tell me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I would love to, to know whether there's similar content you'd like to see more of. I hope this was helpful. It's coming up to Christmas, whether you're putting things on your wish list, whether you're thinking about gifts for others. I always think it's nice to, to get a real idea of what's out there and to see what other people have really enjoyed before you invest your hard earned money in that yarn. So those were just my thoughts. And I'm sure I'll be coming to you with a kind of expanded list in 2024. I'm not going to say a change list because some of these I've loved for years and I'm sure I won't love them any less next year. But um, yeah, an updated version of this video will be coming, I'm sure, in 2024. But for now, I will leave you there. Stay safe. Happy knitting. And I'll see you soon.